Good morning and welcome to Becky's Bible Thoughts. My name is Becky, funnily enough, and I'm a missionary here in Kampala, Uganda, along with my husband Dave. We work with Mission Aviation Fellowship here. Uh, I recently reread a little story in the Bible from the book of Mark. Now, Jesus was on his travels and he ended up in the, the vicinity of a place called Tyre where he's trying to keep his presence a little bit quiet, a little bit on the down low. And that's not really possible because his fame is starting to grow. People are coming from all around to see him and to ask him for miracles. And that's exactly what happens here. As soon as he reaches this area, a, a woman discovers that he has come and she immediately puts everything to one side and comes and falls at the feet of Jesus, pleading with him, begging him to drive a demon out of her daughter. Now, this woman was not Jewish. And initially, Jesus answered that he couldn't help her, that he was first and foremost here to help the, the Jewish people. And in fact, you know, he goes and says, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But she replied, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This woman's faith so impressed Jesus that he said, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Now, I always enjoy trying to put myself in the position of people from these kind of stories to imagine what they must have seen and heard and felt as they encountered Jesus. And I find it hard to imagine what her journey home must have been like. You know, we don't know how far away she lived. It might just have been round the corner. It might have been a few miles. We don't know. But I can just imagine how her emotions would have been swinging between excitement that this might happen and fear that she might get home and find that her child was just the same way or even worse off than before between belief absolutely a hundred percent believing that Jesus could command healing for her child and doubt that concern but but I have prayed for this for years and nothing has happened why is this situation any different right now Perhaps she felt sad that Jesus hadn't personally come with her to lay his hands on that child and pray for them. Or maybe she was just full of absolute joy that, that Jesus had responded to her, a Gentile and a woman. That just did not happen in the culture at the time. A Jewish male talking to a Gentile woman, that was completely beyond believable. I don't know, it's impossible for us to, to know what this unnamed woman of the Bible would have been thinking and feeling at this time. But what struck me as amazing as I, I read through this story again was that she absolutely and completely took Jesus at his word and acted on what he said. The story in, in Mark chapter seven, verse 30 tells us that she went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. She went home. Jesus said, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. The next verse says, she went home. She didn't stay with Jesus for longer, hanging onto his sleeve and asking, are you really sure? Is, is that really what's gonna happen here? Like, are you sure there's nothing else that, that I need to do? Anything I should be doing in this situation? You know, do I, do I need to, to worship you a little bit more? Do I, I need to have a little bit more faith? You know, tell me what I need to do right now, God. May he, she didn't ask for any further proof on what he was saying. She didn't say, well, I can't, I can't really leave you, Jesus, until you give me an absolute guarantee in writing that this is what you're gonna do so I can hold you to it in the future. Jesus told her that her daughter was healed. He told her that she could go and she accepted it. She acted on his word and she did indeed find her, her child healed. Now, 
along with my my Bible teaching here in Uganda, I'm I'm also a writer. I'm an author, and sometimes I'll I'll ask my husband Dave if he could you know maybe just read through something I've written, read through a chapter or a few pages, and you know give me his opinion on it and. It used to annoy him no end when I would ask and he would tell me, yes, I really enjoyed that. That was really, really good. And, and I would answer with, yeah, or like, really? Are, are you sure? Did did you actually read this part? Like, did you check that? Because I'm, I'm not sure about that part. So, you know, maybe you could could double check and see if you're you're sure that you actually enjoyed that. You know, are you sure you don't want to just just look again and, and check it? Are you sure that you're not going to change your mind? It used to annoy him because he would say to me, Becky, I, I, I told you I enjoyed it. If I didn't, I would tell you so. Now believe what I am saying to you. It's something I've had to work on, definitely. But I think so often we take that sort of approach when we come to Jesus. Yeah, well, yeah, you said you were gonna do that. That is what you said, I know. But are you sure? But maybe there's something else that I, I should be doing to, to help with this situation. Maybe you're gonna change your mind in the future. Is there some sort of guarantee you could give me right now? Maybe I could put a fleece down outside, see if it's wet in the morning. Uh, maybe you could just you know, put some sky writing in the clouds so I, I know for sure that I've heard you right. We've all been there, right? We're reluctant sometimes to take God at his word. We find ourselves disbelieving and thinking, could that possibly, possibly be true about me in my life, in my situation? Regardless of what this woman, this Gentile woman was thinking or feeling on this day, she accepted the words that Jesus spoke. She accepted the promise in those words and she acted as if what he'd said was true. That is such a great example for us. You know, if God has said something, then we can absolutely and completely trust in his words. If we have doubts, that's okay. If we feel afraid, that's okay. But we can't let those feelings stop us from trusting in the promise of what God has spoken into our lives and then acting as if we believe on what he has said. You know, I don't think that God gets angry with us if we ask for some more clarification or confirmation on, on what he said. I think it's a very good thing, a good habit to get into to check that whether we're hearing correctly, whether something we think we've heard from God is right or whether something somebody else has spoken over us is right. It's good to, to seek confirmation, but at some point, we need to follow the example of this woman and say, okay, this is hard, this might be difficult, I might be feeling some doubt, I might be feeling some fear, but I accept what you're saying, God, and I believe you, and I'm gonna act as if this is the truth. There's a lovely verse in Jeremiah chapter 17, Verses, it's verses seven and eight and it says blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream it does not fear when heat comes its leaves are always green it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit trust in the Lord, trust in what he says. It is the best place to be. It is where we can live our most fruitful lives. And it is the place where we can see the wonders that God has promised to us be fulfilled in our lives. Thank you so much for watching with me today. I'll be back on Monday with some more thoughts from the Bible. So I will see you then.